Good morning. God bless you. You can be seated. Welcome today. Great to have you here in the house. If you're joining online, we're so good that you're with us as well. Faith, Love, Hope Sunday, very special day in our house at City Point. It's uh, a great season lead up to it. And here we get to, uh, to receive or take up or just uh, be generous to the plans of God. And I'm excited about that. It's also Pentecost Sunday today. Um, so an outstanding connection right there as we celebrate Pentecost as well as our Faith, Love, Hope Sunday. But we're excited to have you here. Um, um, at the end of the service, like Pastor Mike said, we'll receive the offering and he'll come forward. And a lot of people give online, we know that, or, or phone or whatever. But if you've got giving cards, bring them in. If you've got cash or checks, envelopes, stick them in there at the end there. And don't forget your praise reports and prayer requests. Uh, and it'll be exciting. So this morning, we've got a bunch of things happening. So I'm going to share, with the, word, share the Word right now. And we've got a great video um, lined up and uh, then we're going to do the offering. So... This morning, I want to speak to you all about more than enough. More than enough. Um, I, I, I don't know where you want to live in life, but I, I, I determined from a very young age that I didn't want to just have enough. I, I wanted to have more than enough, not to be selfish, but I was able to help other people. And uh, I believe it's a call of God and the plan of God that we have not just enough, but more than enough. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28 says this, Let him who stole... Steal no longer, but rather let him labour or get a job, working with his hands for what is good, that he may have something to give to him who has need. Now, I, I, I want you to see the very essence of the Scripture. Um, it, it says, for those that are stealing, steal no more. Um, it might be a word for somebody here today. Um, if you're stealing, steal no more. Um, but that's not the essence of the Scripture about stealing. Then it goes on and says, get a job, work with your hands, uh, work hard. Um, yet the Scripture's not about getting a job and working hard. So it's not about, though it, it's good not to steal and it's good to get a job, but that's not the essence of the Scripture. The essence of the Scripture is this, don't steal, get a job so you've got something to help somebody who is in need. And I find that the very, the very aim of the Bible and every 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 uh, scripture I can see, every principle of the Bible is that we're in a place not just of enough, but more than enough, so we're able to help those around us. Because enough speaks about our needs, my needs. And there's, and there's nothing wrong with having our needs met. I'm not saying that at all. We need to have our needs met, the plan of God. But I, I think there's another level we should be attaining to that we have more than enough. Because as I mentioned last Sunday, nothing in God is just about you or just about me. It's not, it's not just about you and it's not just about... In other words, we are blessed to be a blessing. Uh, we are saved to get to heaven, no doubt about that. But then once we are saved, our job is to bring salvation to others. If you receive a healing from God, it's not that He just wants you healed. He wants now for your testimony to bring healing to others. So they overcame Him, the devil, by the word of the Lamb, the, uh, sorry, the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So everything in God's not just about us. Everything He brings to us, gives to us, blesses us with is for us and somebody else. So I think more than enough and abundance should be our aim. And that's the plan of God for our lives. I'm gonna read through Corinthians this morning. It's Paul speaking to the church at Corinth and it's about the concept of more than enough. I was gonna go through Paul's writing, uh, his letter to the, the Corinthian church. So let's start with 2 Corinthians 9 verse 5. He says this, that is why I thought it to urge these brothers to go to you, the church, before I come and make arrangements in advance for this generous, previously promised gift of yours so that it would be ready, not as something extorted or wrung out of you, uh, but as a voluntary and generous gift. He is making it very clear to us here that, that I wanna be upfront about this giving thing. You know, the, the, unfortunately, there's a concept out in the world that the church is uh, after your money. Uh, can I make it clear we are? I just want to make it clear. That's what Paul said. I just want to make it clear. He says to the Corinthians, I'm going to come and ask for an offering. And I find it confusing that people get upset about the church asking for money when they never get concerned about everybody else asking for their money. No one gets upset at McDonald's and says, I can't believe you're charging me for this. 
Now, and we've got to understand, we are, and the thing is out there, the world is in it to make a profit. We're in it to change the world that we live in for better. So it's, it's a very clear thing. Of course, we're going to ask people to give because that's how we help change the world around us. And, and Paul's making this very clear. He says, I'm, I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming, and I'm going to take up an offering. I want to be clear about you. I don't want you to feel pressured. I don't want you to feel tricked or manipulated. I want you to understand God's truth regarding generosity. I don't want you whining and whinging and complaining afterwards. I want to make sure that up front, this is the way God moves and works on the planet. I want you to give with confidence, with faith, be excited and willing to participate in the adventure of changing the world for good and for God. That's Paul's letter right here. Get it very clear up front, all right? And now Paul explains how this concept of more than enough works. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, verses six and seven. Now remember this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously, that blessing may come to others, listen to that, will also reap generously and be blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. He says, this is how it works. It's a sowing and a reaping principle. It's planting seed in good soil, and then watching the harvest take place. But I find it fascinating that he goes into detail. It's not that we give or don't give only. It's not how much we give or don't give, because we can give sparingly or bountifully. That's important as well. But then he goes on to say, the attitude with which you give is also important. In other words, it says here, you can give grudgingly, all right? So grudgingly, that, that's, that's that, that, that sense of, oh, that's right, the church is after my money. Throw something in the offering. You're feeling, you know, whatever. I remember taking my brother Brad before he was a believer to a church meeting and uh, uh, <laughs> they received the offering and everything. They had the message. And afterwards, I said to Brad, he wasn't a Christian at the time. I said, man, how, what, did you, what, how, what did you feel about the meeting? Were you touched tonight? And he says, yeah, I was touched in my wallet. <laughs> in other words, he gave grudgingly. He didn't believe in it, didn't want to do it felt compelled. And so it's important we understand that God wants us to give. He wants us to give not sparingly. Now, there's no dollar amount on sparingly or, or bountifully. There's no dollar amount because we're all at different levels. Uh, there are people here that are richer than other people, make more money than other people, some not so much. So it's not a dollar amount. It's a sparingly bountifully concept. And we all know when we've been stingy. We know when we've been stingy. And we know when we've been generous. So that's what we say, you can either give sparingly or bountifully, or you can give grudgingly or be a cheerful giver. If we sow grudgingly and sparingly, we will reap grudgingly and sparingly. I find that fascinating that you can actually reap grudgingly. Say for example, uh, we have offering containers that usually come around, not today, but they come around now after COVID's sort of done with, and uh, you're there and you feel, oh, I better throw something in. You flick a $2 coin in, you got a lousy attitude, you don't really want to do it, feel compelled, people are watching me. And uh, well, your best result according to the Bible is you get your $2 back, maybe with a bit of change, all right? So it goes up a little bit, but now it's angry at you because you've given grudgingly, now you're gonna receive grudgingly. You're gonna get angry money back. That means that $2 that you threw in, you got back now, because God does that, He can't help Himself. That's the $2 that you drop on the way out of church and you bend down to pick it up and you split your pants. <laughs> That's the $2 that when you get to the McDonald's drive through you drop and it slips down between the seat and the console and you're stuck there for 10 minutes holding up the traffic. The Bible says you can actually receive grudgingly back. So if you sow grudgingly, you receive grudgingly. If you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. But if you sow generously and with a good heart, in other words, we come to our giving like, I do this because this means I put God first in my life. That's what giving means. It means I trust Him above all things. And when I give, I know that my giving is going to help change somebody else's life for better. 
People are fed and healed and set free from traffic. All sorts of things happen when I give. Man, and I know the Bible declares that it opens the windows of heaven above me. There is spiritual power and increase available to me when I give. Then when you reap, when you sow generously, you shall also reap generously. You won't get angry back, you'll get happy back. Who wants happy? We all want happy. We don't want angry. Then Paul goes on in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 and 9, he says this, And God is able to make all grace, every favour and earthly blessing come in abundance to you. Listen to this. So that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything. Being completely self-sufficient in Him, you have an abundance for every good work and every act of charity. As it is written, and forever remains written. He, the benevolent, the generous person who scattered abroad, who gave to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. Can I tell you that generosity is not a man concept, it's not a church concept, it is a God concept. And to Him, it is important that the believer live like this. That's what Paul's saying. Let's get it straight in our heads. It's a God idea. It does good and it will not make me poorer. You know, to me, I'm gonna tell you, this Sunday every year is the most expensive day of my year. Every year, the most expensive day. I never spend this much money any other day of the year. And I've been doing it for a long time now. And I wanna guarantee you that whenever I give to God over 30 years of being a believer, it's not once made me poorer. Not once. Not once. I'll tell you what makes you poorer, bad money management and lack of self-control with a credit card. Never giving. Never will it make you poorer. Here we see Paul making sure everybody understands this fact, that when you give unto God, you're not gonna be worse off. It will bless you and it will bless others. God delights in people who give cheerfully with joy, who give cheerfully and are prompt to do it and want to do it. That's what the Scripture's telling us. And you're, you mean, your righteousness endures forever. Your giving is not just a, a, a natural thing, it's now a supernatural thing. It's an eternal value. So Lee and I have decided to live ready and willing to please God's heart with our giving. Paul reveals this in this Scripture so powerfully, right through 2 Corinthians here, that the more than enough principle is what God is aiming for in all of our lives. It seems to me that giving is not about the church getting money off of me. Rather, it seems to me it's God's way of getting blessing and increase to me. And I think our giving makes up some of our bad money management decisions we make along the way, that God's grace and mercy comes through with our generosity. He says an abundance, not less, not an abundance. That means not less, it means more. And you think about it. If you give love, you don't have less love. As a matter of fact, if you give love, there's a very good chance you're gonna get more love back. Even in energy, if you give energy, it doesn't give you less energy. It might feel like it in the moment. It might feel like, oh, I'm exhausted. But the truth is, if you give energy, the return is you get energy back. That's how it works. You give, it comes back. Sow and reap. And it's the same with finances. It's the same with all the things of God. God's plan is always more when you give, not less. And you know what? You can only give what you have. If you have no faith, you can't give faith. If you have no love, you can't give love. If you have no hope, you cannot give hope. If you're angry, you can give anger. So you give what you have. So we've got to have so we can give and God wants us to have more than enough so we can be a blessing to those around us. You know, poverty is a curse. Don't, don't think that poverty or lack is of God. It steals possibility and it steals potential. When I travel to poor nations of the earth, I look at the most beautiful people in the world who could have been doctors, lawyers or great athletes that would never have the chance because of poverty and lack. It steals from us, it is against God, and we wanna see the blessing of God come to us and the people around us. The lack of love does the same thing though, doesn't it? A lack of love steals potential and possibility. A lack of faith steals potential and possibility. And a lack of hope, again, steals possibility and potential. Learn to despise lack, it is not God's plan for your life or anybody's. And I know this, 
Giving is a way to conquer lack in your own life. It conquers selfishness and it conquers self and it says God is alive in my life. It's God's answer to life and life more abundantly for us and for others. It's so important to God that He states, remember we read it, that our generosity endures forever. Verse nine, it says, our generosity and, and makes us scattered abroad, gave to the poor, His righteousness, those that give, endures forever. Now I love this next verse, uh, number 10. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10. It says, now may He supply, now may He, which is the capital H, which is God. Now may God, who does what? God supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. He supply and multiply the seed you have. So He doesn't multiply the seed you haven't sown. It says He multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I, I, I read this and I love the context of it. God says, I provide seed for the sower and bread for eating. I, I do, as I, get, I, I think, as I get older, I think it's a mistake to think we really own anything. You know, I, I look around it and I, I think, you know what, the air that I breathe, I don't own, I just get to use it for a while. The time that I have on this planet, it's not mine, I get to use it for a little while. It's almost like everything belongs to God. As a matter of fact, the Bible actually says that, that God owns everything. The fullness and the glory of the, He owns everything on the planet. Our property, our finances. We think we own it, but the truth is you can't take it with you when you die. You don't own it, you get to use it for a season. God owns it all and He willingly shares all things with us. God holds the universe in the palm of His hand. The Bible says that it's God's generosity that keeps everything in place. He shares it with us. So maybe, maybe, if God owns everything anyway, then maybe the question should be, not how much should I give, but how much should I keep? Yeah, right. <laughs> how much should I, if it's not mine to start with, I, how much should I keep if it's not mine? What a thought that is. What, what a shift in your head that makes. If it's not mine, and I'm, how much not give, but how much should I keep? Remember the story of a lady in a Starbucks coffee shop in the US, it was crowded and she bought a coffee and um, a bag of cookies and she sat down at the table. There was only one seat left and it was opposite a guy she didn't know. So she had a coffee uh, and she started to read her book and she was eating one of the, the uh, cookies. And then she looked up and the guy she didn't know uh, put his, reached over and took one of the cookies. Uh, and she was a little bit thrown by that, that he would be so bold to take one of the cookies. Anyway, she took no notice of it. Anyway, she looked up again and he did the same thing. He reached over and helped himself to a cookie. She's getting a little awkward now. Um, and, uh, and it's down to one cookie on the table and he leans over, he breaks it and gives her half <laughs> and takes the other half for himself. She is now agitated and upset. She said, she's thinking, I can't believe this. She, she picks up her stuff and goes to her car. And when she gets to the car, she's in her handbag looking for her keys and she pulls out her bag of cookies. That's right. She wasn't grudgingly sharing her cookies with him. He was willingly sharing his cookies with her. Don't get confused about who owns what in this system. It's not you being so generous <laughs> It's God. It's God being so generous to you that He gives you time, He gives you air. He gives you blessing, it's His. So the question then, again, asked, well, if it's all God, it's not how much should I give, but how much should I keep? And the good news for you and I, God answers that. He answers that in this Scripture. He's answered it, how much should I keep? This is how I know He answers this. It says, He gives us bread to eat and seed to sow. So all that He gives us has a bread component and a seed component, time has a bread component. And God doesn't ask for your bread. He doesn't ask for all of your time. He doesn't ask for all of your gifts and talents. He doesn't ask for all of your money. He gives most of it to us so we can eat, live and do life. He says, I, I know how much you need. You need bread to eat. See, and, but he says, but there is seed to sow and the seed component that He gives us was never meant to be kept by us. It was to be used for somebody else's benefit. He says, eat your bread, don't eat your seed. He says, keep your bread, 
but give me your seed, the seed of your time. There's a portion of your time that is by God designed to be given to kingdom purposes. The gifts and talents you have to make money, to have a job, whether to be build something or in technology or whatever, that gifts and talents, God gave you them and a seed component that was meant to be used for kingdom purposes. And it's the same with our treasure, no different at all. It's mostly ours. God wants you blessed, but He said, don't eat your seed, sow your seed. So He answers the question of how much to keep, and that's your bread, but give your seed. So into kingdom purposes, so into church life, so into tithes and offerings, so into serving, so into praying, so into Bible reading, so into sharing your faith, so into inviting people to church, so into helping others, so in discipling somebody. So you see, not a all, just you see. Eat your bread, enjoy what God gives you, but don't eat your seed. It's for somebody else's benefit. And God uses the seed, not only to bring harvest to them, but to you as well. In verse 11, it says this. While you are enriched, this is all backed off. Remember, we've been through sowing, reaping, the right attitude, da, 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 how much, being not stingy, but generous. It says, then you, while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. In other words, you can be confident that God is in your generosity. He's in your giving. Be confident that in every way you are better off because you're doing it God's way and not our own way. Not just enough, more than enough. To continue to be somebody else's answer while we breathe. To bring, to be a part of His church, which will bring thanksgiving unto God by those who we touch, heal, feed, set free, and see saved. So today as we go into Faith, Love, Hope, we've got some great things taking place. I'm just gonna go through a few of the things that we're involved in. Um, if we have the slides come up. First one, um, international churches. You know, we have got churches in, uh, in Colorado, in Nashville, in Bulgaria, and in New Zealand, as well as Brisbane. Uh, Colorado uh, has to stop people coming. Uh, they're too full, uh, they need a new building. Pray for them, please, all right? They, this can't go any bigger. Uh, Nashville, uh, it's a building, where we're developing that whole facility. Bulgaria, as we uh, help them move into their future as a church after COVID. Auckland, a uh, bunch of things happening there as well. And then we look at City Point, and uh, we have our Red Frogs program, which is just growing and expanding at so many different levels here and around the world. It's a powerful outreach from who we, what we do. Our education, we have a Sydney Point Ministry College here, an intern program where we're developing future leaders for the marketplace and for the kingdom. Uh, new Zealand, uh, we were gonna start a new church there back before COVID, then it hit. So we still plan to start that new campus in 2023. Uh, next. Uh, here, right on, 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 this, on our facility here. We are, we are dedicated. We, we, we sang the song, Blessed Today, and for your children and your children's children. We as a church are dedicated to generation upon generation upon generation. All right, we are dedicated to that. I will not have a church that grow old, grows old with me. I will have people that grow old with me, but I'll have a church, the next generation, the next generation, and the next generation. We are dedicated to that. So we're gonna spend a bunch of money on all the things up there to help us move forward. Uh, we have our latest church plant on Seleucia at the University of Queensland as an outreach into the university students there. And uh, that's powerful, it's going really, really well. Online services, building upgrades. Then we have our community. <laughs> we have our community care. And uh, there you go, domestic violence support, practical assistance, our legendary Christmas hampers that are the best ever on the planet, go out every year, our ivory project and our marketplace and community care. We're continually expanding all those things uh, here in Brisbane. And I think there's one more slide. And then our international plan is that our, now COVID is uh, over, we can go back into Cambodia. Even though we, our rescue home's been going, we've had to make it quite small for now, but now we can start to expand that again and uh, move out and rescue a bunch more kids uh, out of trafficking and vulnerable and at risk areas. Our Wake in Africa um, outreach will now start up again since COVID's disappearing uh, there. We have, uh, I think we're working with 22 churches in uh, Kenya um, that are somewhat connected to City Point. Uh, 
we do great crusades, we're doing great crusades, we're gonna do them again, and also uh, doing wells uh, for water, fresh water around villages. And then our Ukraine support, uh, as you know, the war in the Ukraine, uh, our church in Bulgaria has been sending trucks and vans up to um, Ukraine full of food, water, and medical supplies. We're, you and I are the ones who are funding that um, back there. And then when they get there, they distribute all that. And then they fill their vans up with, um, with children and families and take them out of the Ukraine, out of harm's way. So that will continue uh, for a season there as well. So there's some of the, the big things that we're about here at City Point. Not, I haven't got all day to go through everything uh, that there is, um, but there's some of the big things that are happening uh, this year and beyond. And we love you to be a part of that. And now to the most important thing, all those things come down to somebody. They all come down to a person. Somebody being free, somebody being healed, somebody being saved. Let's have a look at our Faith Love Hope video. City Point North, my story started with me attending the Faith, Hope and Love service, which was the first one I'd ever been to. I just got completely like overwhelmed with the emotion and the connections I was making with people, um, especially right there from the first service. Yeah. They spoke about Hannah's story. Oh. And I was just sitting there thinking That's if me. there was any other way that, you know, God could be speaking to me directly, that was it. That would be like, it. Right? Mm. The, Journey's been a little bit tough the last few years. Yeah. I'm a single mom. Yeah. Different issues going on with the exes and the kid's dad. Oh, okay. So being able to come to a church that is so supportive and okay. it's like another family. When I first turned up at church, I was didn't have a job, had a really bad car, like just struggling. And since being in the church, I've secured long-term housing. Wow. I've got a new car, got in and started working. And how are your kids doing? So my youngest, he has had a lot of separation issues where he doesn't want to be away from me. Yeah. Um, we walk into church and he's just like, see you, Mum. <laughs> like, off to the kids' club. I'm like, all right, bye. No. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, bud. Hey, Do you want to say hi? Hi, sweetheart. I guess I just really want to say thank you because of the generosity of the church. It's been really life-changing. Yeah. The last year has just couldn't have really gone any better. Because of we have a flood earlier this year. Yeah. The brewery, the water's come in the backyard a little bit. We think not coming. It's finally this much water. Oh my gosh. I got everything lost. No. No clothes, no, no furniture, anything. Everything washed out. Oh my gosh. Our water. So cleaning, so much stuff to take it out. From day one to now, they look after us from the city panchach. Awesome. Je Jessica and Pastor team always ring us how he is going. Oh, that's so and, lovely. And everyone support us from yeah. city panchach. Oh, that's so from lovely. From day one to now, yeah, they look after us, that's give amazing. food and look after um, awesome. clothing. It's nice to be able to see, the, put faces to the generosity though, it's lovely. Because of your generosity, me and my family are now able to move forward with our life in a few weeks' time, maybe even get in, get back into our house. Just thank you again. Oh, thank you. That's Thanks, amazing. darling. That's so lovely. It's beautiful. So lovely. You've made my day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you all going? I'm Gillian yes. and I work with Chardon and we do City Point Music together and I feel like I'm already going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's okay with you through my tears, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to read you one of the testimonies that I received. Oh yes, that'd be lovely. Um, this was just a random Wednesday that I received <laughs> this message from Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, his name is Kev. He gave us a little hello and he is actually from Canada. He said, not to drop a random heavy bomb on a, on a weekday, but nine years ago today, I was going to end my life. Ooh. He said, 
Um, I had bought everything I needed to do the deed and wrote letters saying goodbye to my friends and family. I was doing the final scroll on YouTube to numb myself with mindless entertainment when I randomly came across your song, Emmanuel, God With Us, from your Raw Moments album. I didn't know who Jesus was, but for some reason, he shattered my heart open that night. I didn't know who he was and why he wanted to do with me, but my heart just responded to him and like a dried thirsty mouth to water. So thank you for all your obedience to be a part of the team that extends the love of Jesus in places, in people that you might never know about. Nine years later, I'm a Christian, now married, and today my wife is three months pregnant. No. <laughs> um, I'm very grateful for everyone that God has used to love me into being, and that includes you guys. Grateful to have met God via your music. On behalf of Kev, he says, so thank you for your obedience to be a part of the team. You guys, thank you for your obedience. Thank you for sewing so diligently into City Point over the years. It is such an honor to be a part of the City Point music team and see people like Kev be saved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks for and, sharing. And Time. from our hearts, uh, the whole creative ministry blesses our hearts yeah. over and over. Uh, yeah. It's incredible. Mm. You're precious, thank you. Thank you, guys. Hi. Hello. My name's Bella. My name is Maya. Maya? Yeah. Deb. Deb. I just wanted to start by saying thank you so much for your generosity. My story is I was in uni, um, going to lots of events, um, and the Red Frogs, they were always at events. You know, just their love as an onset of your generosity. Um, they were able to just be there growing up. I was a little bit in church, but I'd never chosen God for myself. Um, and then, yeah, they said, come along to church. Yeah, fast forward two years later now, mm -hmm. got baptised last month. Wow. I'm actually part of a life group now as awesome. well, which is That's awesome. Good. So also like-minded people, um, and we're all studying, going through sort of similar mm. seasons um, with study. I'll, I'll never be able to thank them enough mm for how they um, helped me find God and, and choose Jesus, you know, for myself. That's and, great. Yeah, and now I just, life is better. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so just so, so grateful for people like you and your generosity. And yeah, so that the Red Frogs can do what they do. We just have the opportunity. Yeah, That's no, yeah. and, and it's, it's admirable as well. Honestly, I don't, Sorry, um, I don't, I'd be here today if it wasn't for the fact that, um, sorry, there is enough resources to support that. Um, so important, so. You've been with us, contributed. And yeah. there's no doubt because of you as a church, we've just gone to so many different levels and uh, mm -hmm. your generosity, your commitment has just yeah. been outstanding. And thank we you. want to just personally thank you on behalf of this great church of City Point. So thank you. Yeah. There's no doubt about being part of a great church and it's community, it's helping each other out when uh, people are going through low times, bad times, we support them. I remember my journey with cancer in 2012 and uh, I look at the church praying for me, supporting, supporting me, uh, helping me go through that whole journey together and I wouldn't like to have ever done that alone and I know you're a part of that and uh, I think the church is amazing. Yeah. yeah, what would you do without the church community? City Point has meant so much to us. When our struggles were really, really deep, um, City Point Church was, was there for us. Faith, Love and Hope is a season that we pray into long before it's announced. We know it's coming and, and we've learnt so much through it. God called us to this and we just made the decision that come what may, whatever was it, there and attempting to stand in our way, we were just going to keep doing what God called us to do and stay close to the church and stay close to the people in the church, you know. Um, so for me, giving to City Point Church is um, giving back a fragment of what God has given to me um, and hearing all these stories just ginger me to do more. And not just that, I touch more life by giving. 
lives in which, because of my busy life, I might not be able to touch them. But hearing the impact of what giving does encourages me to do more and more. And the second thing is, giving is like a rebound phenomenon. The more I give, the more I get back from God. And the more I give, the more I become a blessing for others. Came into the church, anchored myself, saw how much it changed my life, and knew that I just wanted to be a part of doing the same thing that somebody did for me. I just wanted to be a part of that for somebody else so that they could experience a good life in Jesus. I mean, we do it because we love to do it, but you know, it's today is just seeing these testimonies is just a powerful thing, you know, and it just reiterates, you know, the reasons why. You know, the other great thing is, you know, I think we, we've been on the tail end of someone's giving previously as well. So we feel, you know, very blessed and humbled because of someone else that gave, um, you know, before us, you know, so um, we're, we're, we're blessing because we've been blessed, you know, and, and uh, we will continue to do that. No doubt that this house is a house of miracles. This offering is a miracle. You are a miracle. We are miracles together. Today we're going to pray for you and with you today as Lee and I are just so honoured to be the leaders of this incredible church. Such the greatest people on the planet. And today again, just another example of how wonderful you all are. So I thank you in advance for your generosity and for what it's going to do in our city, our nation and the world around us. So would you pray with us today? Lord, we thank You right now as we plant seed into the most fertile soil, the hands of the living God. God anointed and blessed like Jesus did with those loaves and fishes, that it would multiply and feed the hungry of today, the lost of today. Let them know the goodness of God and the wonder of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Lord, I thank You right now as we go from this place, blessed to be a blessing. God, that we're gonna take this great faith, this great love and great hope with us into the world around us this week and forevermore. Bless this offering in Jesus' Name and all that agreed said, Amen, Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering today. Thank you, celebrate well.